Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions. My name is Chris, and today we're going to talk about how to recover a failed edge router device. Now, I'm going to be working with an old school edge router light. This is one of the ones that has the beveled edges on the top. The newer ones, like this one over here, are perfectly rectangular. So this is absolutely one of my favorite firewalls. It's got a really good price point. It's around $91, $92, and provides just some amazing functionality as well as throughput. Um, but there is one thing about this device that makes it susceptible to failure. So it's not I, it's not, I wouldn't say it's a common problem, but it's not unheard of that the storage or the operating system on this device gets corrupted. So what am I talking about? Well, let's pop the case open. If you ever do need to get into your uh, edge router, there's just two screws here. You take those out and the case should pop right off. There we go. And so this is what is inside uh, an edge router light and the part that I'm referring to is this right here so this is the operating system and it's basically just a USB stick so you can pull that out right there and there is the edge router operating system what I'm gonna show you today is how to recover the edge OS operating system assuming that this has completely failed so we're gonna start this is actually a working edge router. I have already restored this one. This was one of my clients edge router. They went through a uh, an electrical storm and it corrupted the USB device. Um, I have since recovered it but I'm going to actually destroy it again in order to show you the recovery process. So I'm going to take this USB stick, I'm going to stick it in my computer here and we're going to format it. That's the first thing we're going to do. So let's go ahead and get started and then I will show you how to recover in case uh, the same thing happens to you. Uh, USB stick going into my computer. Okay, so here we go. We have uh, my H drive. We can see on this drive we have a vmlinux.64 and a vmlinux.64.md5. We're just going to right click on the H drive and we're going to say format and start. Yes. Okay, so I have formatted that drive. Let's see if it comes back up. It should have nothing on it now. H drive blank. Perfect. Okay, so now, if I pop this back into my Edge Router Lite, of course, it's not going to be able to boot Edge OS. There is no more operating system. So, let's grab it, and let's go ahead and pop it back in. And the first thing that we need to be able to do is we need to be able to see what's happening in this device at the console level. So, in order to do that, we need a console cable. We're going to plug it into this port right here. If you look at the front of the device, you can see we've got our three Ethernet ports, and then on the side here is the console port. I'm not sure if that's in focus or not, but that is where that port is. So it's actually this port over here. And what you need is a console cable. Uh, this is a console cable that comes with the free PBX systems, but they're very also co uh, they're common in the Cisco world as well. And what it is is a USB 2 on one side, and then an RJ45 on the other. So I'm going to plug that into my computer, and then I'm going to plug it into the console port of the edge router. All right, we're going to put this aside right here. And now the next thing we need to do is figure out which COM port this console cable is now living on. So we're going to run our device manager. In Windows, you just want to start to hit the Windows button and start typing device, uh, space, manager, and eventually it will show up and you want to find ports. So here we have ports COM and LPT and we can see this right here, USB serial port on COM3. So that's where we're going to connect. Close out device manager, open up PuTTY. You want to change it to serial and so by default it says COM1, we're going to say COM3 and we're going to say speed is 115 200 and then click open. Okay, so there's PuTTY. Uh, we're basically showing a live feed of whatever is happening on COM3 right now. Okay, so now if I power on the edge router, we should see something appear on this screen here. So let's go ahead and do that now. Here's my power cable, we're gonna plug it in. And there we go. Looking for valid bootloader image. Scanning, scanning, and nothing. Unable to read VM Linux.64 because it no longer exists on this device. Okay, so we have successfully hosed our edge router and now we need to get it back. So, uh, there is a great article on how to do this in the Ubiquity forums, or I'm sorry, in the Ubiquity um, help pages. I will put a link to this article in the description down below. 
And here we have Edge Router, last resort recovery of a failed Edge OS device. And so basically the steps to do this are, first you have to boot the Edge Router into a recovery software. So there's an Edge Router recover, uh, recovery software. I don't know if it was created by a, a user or if it was created by Ubiquity themselves, um, but it does work. And so that's the first thing we need to do now. In order to get that image to work, or in order to get it to boot, there's two things that we have to do. Number one, we have to take the Edge Router Recovery software, which here's the link right here, download the image, so you can click on that, open a new tab, and you can see these three files here. We've got a .bin, .bin.asc, and then this uh, checksum file. So we've got all of those three files. You need to download those three files, and you need to put them into a TFTP server somewhere. Now. This video, in this video, I am not going to go over how to set up a TFTP server. Okay, that's a totally different subject, um, but you can certainly research that online. There's plenty of free TFTP server tools available. In my case, I'm just going to use my free PBX. Uh, I've got my Sangoma Phone System 60 down here. It has a TFTP server on it. So I'm going to take these three files and I'm going to put into the put those into the TFTP server root on my free PBX phone system. That way I know that they're accessible on my network, I know the IP address, where they are accessible, and so then we are good to go. The second thing you need to do is have a cable, an ethernet cable plugged into ETH0 on the edge router. Okay, so here's a cable that's in my network. I am plugging that into ETH0 on the edge router. And now I should be able to get the edge router an IP address on my network. Okay, so I've booted into this um, sort of, I guess the base OS or the, uh, the low level OS of the edge router. And there are some commands. If you type help, you'll see a whole list of commands of things that you can do. Um, one of the things that you can do is the DHCP command that invokes the DHCP, DHCP client to obtain IP and boot parameters. So if you look at this, document here. If you look at the instructions, it says if you use a DHCP server, issue the following commands in the uBoot CLI. That's where we're currently booted. DHCP colon TFTP boot, which is saying to the edge router, hey, boot, you know, first of all, DHCP, grab an IP address, TFTP boot, boot to option 66 that you received in DHCP, and then boot OCT Linux, and then this variable load ADDR. Okay, so that's a whole bunch of things that might be confusing if you've never done this before, but it's basically saying, get an IP address from DHCP, boot to the option 66 TFTP server, and then load, you know, whatever bin software is in there. Okay, so if you don't have a DHCP server or you don't have option 66 set in your DHCP server, you have to do this a little bit differently. Uh, most people have DHCP, not a lot of people are going to have option 66 pointed to a TFTP server. So, uh, if you click, if you do DHCP command, let's do that one first. DHCP, boom, we grabbed an IP address right there. So now I am bound to 192.168.200.189. If you don't have DHCP, you can run, uh, set an IP address statically using these commands down below. Set IP address, x.x.x.x, set net mask, 255.255.255.0 or whatever net mask you want. Okay, so you can run those two commands and essentially do the same thing that I just did by running the DHCP command, but you're specifying a static IP instead of a uh, dynamic IP. Okay, <clears throat> the next thing is if you don't have option 66, you can say set server IP y.y.y.y, which is where uh, the y.y.y.y is your TFTP server address. Now, in my case, it is 192.168.200.5, so I'm gonna say set server IP 192.168.200.5. The next thing we need to do is set the name of the boot file. So the boot file that we downloaded, if you remember when we looked in here, was emrk-0.9c.bin. So we're basically gonna just put that in here, set boot file emrk-0.9c.bin. So now what we've done is we've said, okay, low level OS operating system, 
here's the TFTP server that I want you to use, and here's the file that I want you to grab out of that TFTP server. So the next thing that we need to do is type TFTP boot, and that's going to take the information we just put in and try to boot to it, enter. There we go, it grabbed the file, file name emrk0-9c.bin, it loaded that file and we are good to go. The final command we need to do is just basically run that file. So we're gonna say boot OCT Linux, dollar sign load ADDR, enter. Okay, so now it's running through a bunch of different commands and this is the basically booting us into the edge router recovery software. Okay, so here we go. This is a big disclaimer, basically saying, you know, we're not responsible for anything. If you screw anything up, we're just gonna say yes to proceed. Do you want to configure network via DHCP? In my case, yes, I do. Uh, if you say no here, it'll walk you through static setup. So I'm gonna say yes. So there we go. And now we have our three options, EMRK factory reset, EMRK remove user data, and then the one that we're actually gonna use, EMRK dash reinstall. So let's go ahead and run that command, emrk reinstall. And it's going to give us a warning. This will reinstall EdgeOS from scratch. If you have any usable data in your router storage, it will be irrevocably, irre, irrecoverably destroyed. It's a weird word. Do you want to continue? Yes. Okay, so now it's formatting the USB. And in a second here, it's going to ask us for the URL where we want to download the Edge OS software. Okay, so that's the next thing we need to do is find the Edge OS software somewhere, right? So where do we find it? We find it at ubiquity.com. Here we go, enter Edge OS image URL. So, okay, so here's ubiquity.com. I'm gonna click on it, downloads. Then I'm gonna click on uh, Edge Max right here. And then I wanna click on Edge Router Lite. Now, if you have an Edge Router PoE, click on Edge Router PoE. If you have an Edge Router Pro, click on Edge Router Pro, etc. And we can see that the version out here is 1.9.1.1. And I'm going to click the download button. Now, this gives me a link. Direct URL to download is right here. The one thing we have to know is that we actually don't want to copy it with HTTPS. We want to do it without the um, uh, SSL or the, uh, the secure HTTP. We want to just do straight up HTTP. So grab the URL, but change it to HTTP instead of HTTPS, copy that. And now let's go back to PuTTY and we're gonna paste it. You paste with shift insert. There we go. So that is the file that we wanna download. We're gonna go ahead and say enter. And now it is downloading that file. 4%, 13%, 21, 30. So it's downloading the file. As soon as it downloads that file, it's going to run through the processing of the file. Okay, so that just took about 60 seconds and now it says, please reboot your router. So we're just gonna type reboot. Oops, get focus back in here. Reboot and enter. And now this time when it reboots, it should look a lot better as far as actually booting up without any sort of errors. Okay, there we go. I have now booted up and we have the UBNT login. So we're gonna log in with the default credentials of UBNT, UBNT, and there we go. Welcome to Edge OS. We have now successfully restored our Edge router light. Now, the next thing we need to do is actually pop into the Edge router interface, make sure that it's up and running. So I'm going to disconnect the Edge router from the network and I'm going to plug in my computer uh, into ETH0. <clears throat> okay, so by default, the edge router is located at 192.168.1.1. So I need to configure my computer that I just plugged into ETH0 to be an IP address in that same range that is not 192.168.1.1. So properties of my Ethernet adapter, and we're going to say 192.168.1.2. One dot one is the gateway. DNS doesn't matter. This is only gonna be temporary anyways. Okay, okay. And now I should be able to pull up in my browser uh, 192.168.1.1. 1 
there we go advanced proceed and here we have edge max default login so ubnt ubnt click i agree and log in there we go router is in default config do you want to start with the basic setup wizard we're going to go ahead and say yes i'm going to click on wan plus two lan two that's the wizard that i like to use internet connection type dhcp we're, I don't want to bridge the LAN interfaces into a single network. LAN port ETH1, I'm going to make 192.168.99.1. Uh, this can be whatever you want. I just like to take it off of 192.168.1.1 since everyone uses that by default. Secondary LAN port ETH2, I'll call this 192.168.199.1. Enable the DHCP server on both. And let's just keep our existing users. Of course, best practice, change your default Ubiquity password. Apply that, apply, reboot, yes, reboot. Now, while this is rebooting, I need to switch some things around. I moved my LAN to ETH1, so I need to take my computer out of ETH0 and plug it into ETH1. And then I need to plug something into the WAN port. This is where you would plug your internet normally. In my case, I'm going to be plugging in uh, just another one of my LAN networks. Okay, so we have internet plugged in and we have my computer plugged into ETH1, which means that as soon as this finishes rebooting, my computer should get a DHCP IP address in 192.168.99.0 slash 24 network. And then I actually should have internet access right away as well. Let's go back to Putty and see how we're booting up. Okay, there we go. The uh, edge router has finished booting up. I want to set my computer now to DHCP. So we're going to go back into my network settings, properties of my ethernet adapter, double click, obtain IP address automatically, obtain DNS automatically. Okay, okay. And I should almost immediately get a DHCP IP address. Okay, so let's check what IP address I got. IP config, uh, enter. And uh, we have 192.168.99.38. So perfect. Uh, let's try pinging the internet, ping 8.8.8.8. .8 there we go, I now have internet access, and let's bring up the interface one more time. We're now at 192.168.99.1. Advanced proceed, UBNT, UBNT, and there we go. Okay, so I've got my internet up, I've got my ETH1 up, and we are all set. This edge router has successfully been recovered. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is really a great platform. Again, it is susceptible to electrical interference, just like any device in, uh, you know, any computer or network device. Um, so best practice, of course, is to have this on a surge protector, have this on a battery backup if possible. And there is a, a grounding screw in the back as well. So if you want to be extra safe, make sure you uh, ground out the edge router as well. Uh, if you guys are interested in purchasing an edge router, I will put a link down below. That is an Amazon affiliate link. If you click on that link and purchase an edge router, uh, it doesn't change your price at all, but it does give me a couple bucks for the referral. So I certainly appreciate that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. My name is Chris with Crosstalk Solutions. If you did enjoy this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please click subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.